So my TSOP 44 package SRAMs arrived for the TF530. Figured I might as well show you guys a different way of doing SMT stuff, or a little slightly different anyway. Um, on these water pitch parts, they're actually pretty simple once you get used to them. Uh, easy thing to do, just uh, solder, soldering iron, give them a little tack on the corner, and then what you can do is just place the chip by melting the solder again with the iron, and slide the chip in place. And then you can just sort of do all your positioning right there. If you don't like how it's sitting, heat it up again. That looks pretty good. I'll do another one here just for grins. It's one that way when you hold the chip, uh, you aren't like bumping it out of the way, trying to keep it perfectly aligned on the pad the whole time. Just reflow the solder, slide the chip in. That is the dog underneath the uh, bench here. If you hear the groaning, she's annoyed because I'm talking while she's trying to sleep. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's on there. Um, and then it's kind of the same deal I did before, which is really just uh, go ahead and put a little tack on another corner. That one's not on there. I don't, really, I don't like the placement on that guy. So again, I'm just going to move it a little bit. Try to keep that lined up. Not making it worse. There we go. That seems better. And pick an opposite corner if possible. You can see that a little, little tack, little tack, and that just holds them in place while you do the, the drag solder on the rest. The drag solder in these is actually easy and kind of fun, so I'll do that here. Oops, <laughs> clearly I didn't have that one tacked on the corner. If that happens, pretty straightforward. You can put a little solder on the pad just to pre-tin it, gently bend it back in place. I see legs will usually be able to do that once or twice before they break, but I wouldn't make a habit of it at all possible. So anyway, I've got flux on this side, so I'm just gonna run There we go. So I got a short maybe on that last pin, but we'll clean that up. The little blip. There we go. Move on to the next one. I already flexed it, but we'll do it again. Oops. The reason I'm getting that little blob on the end is just I have a bit too much solder on the iron as I'm dragging. But they're easy to clean. So I'm just going to go ahead and put flux on these other ones off camera, just because it's faster for me, a little bit more room to maneuver, and I will repeat. I'm going to stay away from that corner initially just to, there we go, keep it from melting the pad, there we go, turn that around. Now, once they've got a good amount of solder from the other side, you don't have to worry about them shifting around as much. Oops, I was going better until I hit the end there. And I'll clean the gap later. Next one. And I'm just wiping the iron off in between these attempts to clear the short. I'm doing it on my jeans, but probably smart to use something a little 
more robust than that. Anyway, um, I was working quick there, so some of the placements aren't perfect, but electrically they're good. At this point, we can go in and look for other shorts, like this guy on the end here. I got a couple on that side, so we can just flux it, reflow it, and that's good. Good enough. So, now it's four T-SOPs in a yeah, pretty short order. Oops, there's another little spot there. Clean that guy up. Oh, that's stubborn. Again, just flux. Flat side of the iron. There we go. And another one. <laughs> I say, if you do this under magnification, it's a little easier. I'm kind of fighting the camera position here, but I think that's about it. So anyway, a bunch of T-SOPs didn't take very long. Kind of fun to do, actually. Hope that's useful for somebody.